Janan, in trying to understand what we are as human beings, the concept of self is a word that we use that has deep meaning that philosophers, psychologists use in many different ways, in controversial ways. As a philosopher of physics, what are you doing messing around with selves? My own work has tended to focus on those parts of, um, of rea our conception of reality, which are hard to accommodate um, by physics in physics. So physics has spectacular success in describing all kinds of things. But there are places where the shoe really pinches. And questions about what selves are is probably the hardest. Descartes um, introduced the question by saying, what is this I whose existence is made known to me in the very act of trying to deny that it exists? And I think if we think of selves in that very abstract way, what is it that's grasped by these reflexive acts of cognition? It's exceedingly hard to see how anything that's described in third person terms um, could satisfy that description. And that's the roots of the problem of dualism, the problem of consciousness, the problem of reconciling first person and third person conceptions of the world. Okay, so I still feel I have a self. I've heard everything that you say, and I understand the, the potential conflict. Uh, but then which should I privilege? Should I privilege my understanding of physics, or should I privilege my uh, latter-day Descartes? For me, that can't be a choice. I mean, it can't be that, that physics tells us that there are no selves. So I know people, there are some people that think that. To me, the starting point of all inquiry is the awareness of the existence of the self. So for me, it, it has to, there has to be some kind of confusion that generates the problem. Um, and I think there is. I think a lot of it has to do with some very na natural, but again, naive ways of thinking that the first person view of reality connects to the third person view of reality. And those, I think, have to be broken down. They have to be identified and broken down. There's a very Wittgensteinian way of thinking of philosophy as kind of identifying the sources of confusion and exercising them. And I think um, this has to be one of them, though it's really hard to, to identify it. If you do that, then you're going to be attacking the fundamentals of the third person approach, which is physics or you're going to be attacking, or and, the uh, first-person approach, which is my sense of self. Mm -hmm. uh, you've told me that you're strongly committed to both, mm -hmm. and yet you have to attack one or the other, or you have to attack both. I think um, it requires a bit of adjustment on both sides. Um, the, one of the ways of saying that there's a problem there, and I think the one that for me was the hardest to get my mind around, um, is that when we think about ourselves, we sort of grasp ourselves as an indivisible unity. But everything in nature is divisible. We can keep dividing and dividing and dividing, and we never get to, unless perhaps it's the fundamental particles, if there are some, um, something that's indivisible. But the self isn't a fundamental particle. Um, so understand if selves are physical things, it seems they have to be somehow built out of, they have to be somehow built out of more fundamental things. But that seems to come up against the indivisibility of the self. So I think, you know, that was a really, really difficult problem. But I think that the crucial thing to seeing your way around that problem is to think about other kinds of systems that seem to have a kind of uh, unity and div indivisibility, but are themselves made out of more fundamental things. So I like to think in very common sense terms. Um, think of things like juries. Juries have members, and the members of juries are ordinary people, and they're made out of you know more fundamental things. Um, but there's also some the jury, which is in some sense has its own unity. So when you think about the proclamations and the verdicts that the jury pronounces, those aren't necessarily um, properly assigned to any of the members of the jury. They belong to the jury as a whole. And the same things with the, the kind of 
commands that a jury gives. Those belong to the jury as a whole. And now when you start to think about it, when you think about selves, we are first and foremost things that have beliefs. We, we make judgments. We issue commands. So I think the trick is to see us as more like juries than physical objects. Those who would use this kind of an argument would conclude that therefore the self is an illusion. It is a construct. It is something that we uh, think is unified, but in fact it is not. So in your analysis, it seems that you are uh, deflating and changing the self, or at least our conception of it, much more than you're changing the physics. No, I think I'm revealing uh, ambiguity in our notion of unity. So there's material unity or material indivisibility. And then there's a different kind of unity. That's not the unity of a material thing, but the unity of a point of view. Or the unity of a kind of age, uh, an intentional agent. Um, and there, I think, models of juries or governments um, or complex adaptive systems, which can be the subjects of things like beliefs and intentional states and commands, um, that, for me, is the right model for the unity of the self. So I don't deny that, um, that there is nothing in nature that's not divisible. But I think that the self has a different kind of unity. And I actually think that the sort of unity that systems like juries um, have is a much more apt model for the kind of unity that the self has.